Hey, second and third graders of Seattle Public Schools, my name is Mr. Massimino, and I work at Emerson Elementary School, and I am going to be doing some math with you this week. At Emerson, we're the Eagles, and as Eagles, we try to soar. So this week, let's just all be Eagles, and let's soar. Hi, second and third graders. This week's game is called Save 20. You're going to find it in your packet. You're going to see a set of directions on how to play the game. You might even see an example game written out in words. And you're going to see a piece of paper that has dice that you'll be able to cut out. The only things that you need are those dice or any dice from, um, say, a board game that you have in your house and a scratch piece of paper. The purpose of this game is to practice our addition skills and trying to get as close to 20 as possible. You and your playing partners, up to three people, are going to need five dice. Now, you're going to have to decide who is going to go first. Once you've decided, that person gets four rolls to try to make the number 20. And this is what it's going to look like. Let's say I'm the first person. I'm going to roll the dice, and I'm going to start looking for numbers to keep. I'm just going to keep these two, because I get four rolls to try to get to 20. So I'm going to keep the three and the two, and that makes five. Because I have four rolls, I get to go again. Hmm, five. You know what? I'm going to keep this one. Five plus five is ten. I get to roll again because I get four rolls. Ten. Or, yep, five plus five is ten. I'm going to keep... The six. So when I add up my four dice so far, I have five, 10, 16, and I have one roll left. Now I have to get a four or less because if I end up with a number larger than 20, then I get zero points for that round. No, it was a five. I can't believe it. So 16 plus 5 made 21. And 21 is bigger than 20. So guess what? I ended up with zero points for that playing round. Now, if I had rolled something smaller than 5, let's say I had rolled a 2. That means after my 4 rolls... I would have had 3 plus 2 is 5, 10, 16, 17, 18. Because I was at 20 or less, then I would have been able to keep all 18 of my points. But the reality is that was not what happened. So then it would be player 2's turn. They have to roll all five dice four times, trying to keep dice, adding them up to 20. And then player three. Remember, you do this for four rounds, and the person with the most points after the fourth round is the winner. Good luck. Hey, second and third graders, we're going to briefly review what our symbols are for comparing values. So we all know that this symbol is equal, showing that two values are the same on both sides. If one value is less than another, we're going to use this symbol. And if one value is greater, we're going to show 
Let's continue. All right, second and third graders, because we're going to be comparing money today, I just want to briefly review what um, coins we use in our money or currency. Um, so first, I'm just going to give you a couple of seconds to take a look at the image and just think to yourself some of your notices. Okay. One notice that I have is that the values start from the lowest amount, one cent, and they go all the way up to half of a dollar. Half of a dollar being 50 cents because half of 100 is 50. I want you to notice that each of these values or coins are being shown in different ways. They're showing you the name, they're showing you both sides of the coin, and they're showing you how we write the coin or show that value written. You're going to notice when we're talking about uh, cents, we use that letter C with a line through it. Briefly, we have pennies, one cent, nickels, five cents, so you would need five pennies just to make one of those, dimes, which are worth 10 cents, quarters, which I bet a lot of us are familiar with, because for some reason, we use quarters a lot out in the world to go to the arcade and play games. When you're at the grocery store and they have those little machines and the machines have the little prizes inside of them and so you're asking your family for quarters. And then finally, half dollars. Remember, half dollars are kind of unusual. They're kind of rare. But half of a dollar is 50 cents. Let's get ready to compare some sets or groups of coins. On the image in front of you, you're going to see two sets or groups of coins. We're going to be showing how they are either the same, equal, or how one group is less or more than the other. So this would be my approach. First, I'm going to start on the left. Whoop. Let me change my marker size there. Oh, and you know what? I don't really like yellow for this. So I'm going to change to blue. Okay. First thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to label how much each of the coins is worth. This is 25. This is 10. And this nickel is 5. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add all three of those values up. You might do this in an algorithm where they're all vertical, one on top of each other, you might be able to do it this mentally. I'm going to um, solve this mentally. <laughs> okay, so uh, 25 plus five, right? 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. And then I'm gonna add 10 more to that. So 10 more than 30 would be 40. So on the left, I have 40, and remember we use a C with a line through it to show cents. This means it's a value that is less than a dollar. Now let's take a look at the other group of coins. Same thing, I'm gonna take and write the value of each coin inside of them. So I know quarters are worth 25, I know a dime is worth 10, and I'm going to take my picture away so that we can see all of the coins in this image. One penny, two pennies, three pennies, four pennies. Now I'm going to add those values up. You could add them up on a lined piece of paper, or you could try to use mental math. I'm going to start with the 25, and I'm going to add 10 to that 25. 25 plus 10 is 35, and now I'm going to add the rest of my pennies. 36, 37, 38, 39. So, on this side, we have 39 cents. Now, I know that 40 is one more than 39. 
like when I'm counting 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. 40 is the larger number. Now I need to show that using our symbols. I'm going to use the symbol that looks like this. And I read it saying 40 is greater than 39. This math problem is also asking you to compare values of currency or money. But you're going to notice it looks a little different. Instead of showing you the picture of coins, they actually have the numbers already written out. So let's go ahead and solve this math problem together. And then you can continue in your packet to work on ones that are similar. So I'm going to choose a color. I'm going to choose blue because that's my school colors. And I'm going to read the directions because you have to always read the directions to know what's expected of you. And these directions say complete the tables and fill in the blanks. I'm going to put a box around the tables. You might hear another word used for tables. You might hear model. You might hear diagram. But for this activity, they're going to use the vocabulary tables. And you can see that it's blank under the words dollar and cents. And we're being expected to fill that in with numbers. So I'm going to look next to the table at the two students' names, Shania and David. And underneath their names, they show how much each of those students has in money. Right away, I can see that both students have at least one dollar or more because they're showing a dollar sign, the symbol with an, of an S with a line through it, instead of the cents sign, which is what we used earlier in the math problems. That was the letter C with a line through it. So let's go ahead and fill in our table like the directions asked. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at Shania. And Shania's dollars and cents are separated by a symbol. That symbol is a decimal. So in front of the decimal, I see that she has the number 12. And behind or after the decimal, she has 30. Shania had $12.30. Let's take a look at David. For David, I'm going to use a different color. I'm going to choose green. And for David, I see that his dollars, 17, and his cents, 50, are also separated by that symbol, a decimal. I'm going to write in my 17, and I'm going to write in my 50. I have completed the tables. Now I need to fill in all of the blanks. That means down where the sentences are, we're going to have to complete those sentences. And we're being asked to complete them by being able to recognize if Shania and David have the same amount, or does one of them have more or less than the other? So if you were in my class, and we were comparing numbers or values, we would usually make a place value chart. Another strategy that students in my class use is they just write the values one above the other, making sure to keep the digits lined up. And you can see that our table does that for us already. So I'm going to start on the left the farthest digit to the left, and I'm gonna to look to see if one of those digits or numbers is larger or less than the other. And I see both of them have a one. That tells me they're the same, and that tells me that I can't come to an answer yet. So what I do, and you might already do this in your class, is I'm going to cross out those ones to tell me to go to the next place. So when I look at the next place, I notice Shania has a 2, and I notice that David has a 7. I know that 7 is more than 2. That tells me right now 
that David has more than Shania. So when I look down at the sentence that says blank is more than blank, I'm going to put that $17.50 is more than $12.30. Now, it also asks us to say it in a different way. The second sentence says, blank is less than blank. So we need to fill that in. And when we go to write that, we're going to start with the smaller value. Think to yourself, who had the smaller value? You're right, it was Shania. So we're going to put $12.30 for Shania, and that is less than what David had, $17.50. Now that we've done this one together, I challenge you to go through your packet and work on any problems that are similar to this. Hey, second and third graders, we're going to shift away from comparing money and start talking a little bit more about measurement in the world around us. I saw that our teachers from Seattle over the last couple of weeks have been sharing with you different ways that we measure in the world around us. And this week, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about something called volume. You might already have heard of that word before. But to help you understand volume a little bit more, we're going to watch a short video. And then when the video is over, we're going to take a look at a couple of the math problems that are still left in your packet. Okay, let's finish strong. Measuring liquid volume. Any liquid inside a container will have what is called a volume. The water in this container has volume. And the water in this container also has volume. What is volume exactly? Let's focus on this bottle over here. Volume refers to the amount of space taken up by the liquid. But how do we measure volume? For example, what is the volume of the water in this container? We use a standard unit for measuring volume called the liter. This bottle, for example, contains one liter of water. And this bottle contains one liter of milk. And this one has one liter of juice. As you can see, these bottles look different, but they all contain the same volume of liquid, which is one liter. In this lesson, you learned about the standard unit for measuring volume. All right, second and third graders, I hope that you understand volume a little bit more and how it's used in the world around us. On the screen, you're going to see an image that you'll find probably on page eight of your packet. We're gonna do a couple of these math problems together and then you're going to hopefully be able to complete the rest on your own. Let's go ahead and get started. All right. So what I've done is I've taken our image and I've kind of zoomed in so that we can just look at problem number one. Now, whenever you get ready to complete an activity, it's always really, really important that you go through the directions. So let's go ahead and read what it says. Number one says, solve how much each geometric shape weighs. 
you can use either pounds or kilograms. Now, there's a couple of really important keywords that we need to understand as we get ready to complete our activity. First of all, we're trying to figure out the amount of weight for each of the shapes. They just put like a really fancy word in front of it, geometric. Geometric just means, you know, like rectangles, squares, circles. They're all shapes that we've been using in school so far. And what we're trying to figure out is how much it weighs. And so they've given us kind of, um, you can see with letter A, they've given us these kind of like pictures on a scale. Now what you see are scales. And when both sides weigh the same amount, or when both sides are equal, the scale stays level, or you can see that it's even. It's even across. One is not lower than the other. So what this activity is asking you then is, if you can see numbers on one side, what does that mean for the shape, possibly on the other side? So let's go through this. For letter A, it's asking you, how much does the square weigh? Well, my first notice is the square is not lower or higher than the two weights. It's the same amount, or it's also equal to those two weights on the left. So all I have to do for letter A is add the two values together, and that's going to tell me how much the square weighs. So in letter A, 2 plus 5 makes 7. So the weight for the square in letter A would be 7. But it asked you to make sure that you label it. You're going to want to label it either pounds or kilograms. In this case, I'm going to use pounds. And for pounds, we use L, B, S. Let's take a look at letter B. <clears throat> Again, the first thing that I do is I look to see, is one side lower than the other? It doesn't look that way. It means that both sides are equal. Now, how could they be equal if they have a different number on each side? You're probably thinking Mr. Massimino is a little bit crazy. But that's why we have to figure out how much the square weighs. So on one side, we have 2 plus whatever that square weighs. And on the other side, we have 8. So I'm going to ask myself, what could I add to 2 to make it equal to 8 so that both sides are the same amount? Well. I could just start at 2 and count up to 8. Why don't I use that strategy? 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I know that that square weighs 6, or 6 pounds, L, B, S. Now, you have a chance to go through and finish the rest of your packet. I want you to know that it's been a great experience for me working with you and being able to share this knowledge and I hope that all of you are doing well and I hope that sometime I will see you around Seattle.